Valley Qualified Health Center here in the city, and we know of the importance of this event today, of this, uh, thank you, Mayor, for being here, and I'd just like to give the podium to one of my colleagues really quick, Jessica Schroeder, a pediatrician, lead pediatrician at Mary Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Schroeder, and I have been lucky enough to be here for the past 15 years as one of the pediatricians. Um, and as a pediatrician, we love vaccines because it is one of the most important things we can do for the health of children and that parents can do for the health of children. And I know from firsthand, when I started my training at Children's Hospital 20 years ago, we used to see a lot of diseases that are now prevented from vaccines. So in 1999, we, didn't, we saw rotavirus, which would make many children sick and ill. We saw many children die of pneumococcal disease that we don't see anymore, thanks to vaccines, thanks to programs like Vaccines for Children. Como doctora por muchos años aquí, sabemos que vacunas son seguros para todos. Vaccines are safe, vaccines are effective, and vaccines save lives. So I encourage everyone to get their vac children vaccinated and vaccinated on time. Thank you. Thank you. And um, again, it is my privilege to, um, to not only um, honor the, the uh, mayor for being here, but all of your staff that are here, including Jackie Reyes from the Office of Latino Affairs and many, many more deputies from all over. Um, but uh, I have the privilege of actually um, inviting to the podium Mrs. Keys and Xavier, please. Xavier, where are you? <laughs> Come on, Xavier. Okay, well, anyway, Xavier, who will be starting who will be starting pre-K-4. So thank you, Ms. Key, for being here today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Shermaine Keys, a native Washingtonian from Ward 8, and a proud mother to my energetic four-year-old son, Xavier. This morning, I have the privilege of introducing the mayor of our great city, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Mayor Bowser has cons consistently been a champion for children in all eight wards. From launching the Thrive by Five initiative, which connected families like mine to maternal and infant health resources, to also providing tax credits in the amount of $12.5 million to make child care more affordable for families just trying to get by. Mayor Bowser has invested in our children, the future leaders of our city. This fall, my son Xavier will start pre-K-4 program at a local charter school in D.C., with all of his immunizations up to date because of the commitment Mayor Bowser has made to investing in our children. Marion Wright Elderman once said, investing in children is not a national luxury or a national choice. It is a national necessity. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for recognizing our children as an investment in our future. And as a fellow mother, I thank you for your commitment to their growth, development, and for success. I now present Mary Maria Bowser. Well, good morning, everybody. We're here to talk about shots. <laughs> right, Doc? Okay. And it's, a, it's an important conversation to have, and I want to thank Xavier and his mom uh, for being here representing three- and four-year-olds and children all over the District of Columbia uh, who love this time of year because they get to be at home, they get to be at camp, they get to stay up late, they get to eat all their favorite cereals in the morning and all of that good stuff. Uh, but it is also a time um, when many of us are focused on them getting a good start uh, to the school year. Uh, and we are joined, Maria. And I want to thank Maria Gomez and her outstanding team at the Mary Center. Uh, I love coming to the Mary Center um, because I remember when you opened your doors here in Ward 4 on Georgia Avenue uh, and what a resource you have been uh, for so many families who come right to the center and know that they are going to get quality care. Uh, and you are just a key, um, a key uh, point uh, for so many people and the connections that they have made to Mary Center over the years. So uh, let's hear it for Maria Gomez. 
Uh, we are also joined by the district's doctor, uh, Dr. LaQuandra Nesbitt, who leads our Department of Health uh, and who is responsible uh, for health programs um, all over the city uh, and in working uh, with providers like the Mary Center uh, and also our public schools. Uh, so uh, Deputy Mayor Kine is here as well, um, our public education leader, uh, our chancellor of public schools, Louis Farabee is here. Thank you, D uh, Dr. Farabee, for being here. And also Scott Pearson, who is representing District of um, Columbia Public Charter Schools and the Public Charter School Board. Uh, so I want to thank Thank you for all being here. Our goal is really simple today, and that is to bring awareness, as you heard from our doctor, uh, about the importance of immunizations for children uh, and teens living in D.C. and attending school in D.C. Immunizations are the single most important way to protect families against serious and sometimes deadly diseases. Uh, we, I'm going to share a few facts with you. According to the latest data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 1,109 individual cases of measles have been confirmed in 28 states in the first six months of 2019. This is the greatest number of cases reported in the United States since 1992 and since measles was declared eliminated in the year 2000. There have been no reported cases in Washington, D.C., but we know that there have been reported cases in Northern Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania, states with high numbers of commuters coming in and out of Washington, D.C. So today we are urging parents not to wait until it's time for school to get your children vaccinated. And I know the people of Mary Center want to scream that right now. <laughs> Make an appointment today with your child's primary care uh, physician or visit a district health facility. The MMR vaccine is just one of the required vaccines, and so we also want to make sure that families have all the information they need to keep children and our entire community safe and, help and healthy. We have materials about recommended and required vaccinations here, uh, and you heard the doctor say it, vaccines are safe and effective. Immunizations don't just protect you, but the decisions that you make um, protect the entire community, especially people who are unable to safely receive the vaccines themselves, such as newborns, uh, as well as children ad and adults and seniors with weakened immune systems. So again, don't wait to vaccinate until school starts. Get your child vaccinated today. Already, we were, I was just talking to some friends, it's July 15th. When you look up, it's going to be August 15th. And then you know what happens then, my favorite time of the year, back to school. Um, so with that, I want to make sure that we um, continue to stay focused on our planning for the summer, getting our young people ready, giving our health professionals the time that they need because they are very accustomed to the rush before school, um, but you want to give them the time that they need, not just for the vaccinations, but to talk to you about what else is going on in your family, with your health, with your kids' health, so that we can build a healthy Washington. Um, I, too, want to acknowledge our director of the Office of Latino Affairs, Jackie Reyes. Uh, and uh, Jackie is representative of a number of our community affairs offices who are out in the community uh, each and every day helping to spread this word among many uh, other issues as well. Uh, and I especially want to pause for a second and, and talk about the community that Jackie helps us communicate with each and every day um, and assure them uh, that when they come into our facilities, when they come to facilities like Mary Center, we don't care about immigration status. We want children to get all of the health care um, that they need and deserve, and that your local government works for you, not for ICE. So please help me spread that word. 
I also want to acknowledge Faith Gibson Hubbard, who's new uh, to my cabinet, uh, who is the executive director of our Thrive by Five program. Uh, and Faith's entire job is to look across all the agencies of DC government to make sure we have well women and babies, um, well women and babies, and make sure we're making those investments so that we are not only having healthy and thriving young people, but when they show up at school, they're ready to learn. Uh, so with that, let me turn to our doctor, uh, Dr. LaQuantra Nesbitt. Thank you so much, Mayor, for your continued commitment to making sure that all of our families here in Washington, D.C. can thrive and live healthy and productive lives. And I thank you all for being here today. Uh, just the sheer number of people in this room shows the commitment to this issue and a commitment to continuing to understand why having a population that is immunized and protected from vaccine-preventable illnesses is critically important. Uh, we know that so many people have been watching what's been happening nationally. We've seen an increased amount of interest at our office uh, with measles, and we want to make sure that we are ahead of the game here in D.C. Uh, places like Mary Center, the Federally Qualified Health Centers, all of our health care providers are part of what we do in the district called preparedness. Uh, some people are familiar with our preparedness efforts because we get ready for the 4th of July. Uh, we'll be doing something later this week called Capital Fortitude to be prepared that if something like anthrax were to come to our city, and people are very familiar with us being prepared for hurricanes. But we have to be prepared for reemerging infectious diseases like measles, like varicella, uh, like pneumococcal diseases that Dr. Schroeder talked about, that the event of something or the creation of something like immunizations or vaccines over 100 years ago has done more to extend lives than some of the modern technologies that we often celebrate and chase and try to get for our families. So imagine what we could do as a community here in Washington, D.C., if we all buckle down and get all of our children vaccinated as they get ready to go to summer camps, as they get ready to go back to school, and we can get our immunization rates back to where we want them to be. It's critically important for us at, the, at D.C. Health that we spread this message and that people understand why we're talking about this so much. The mayor has mentioned that there have been no cases of measles in particular, which is the national discussion here in Washington, D.C., but there have been in Northern Virginia and there have been in Maryland. And where do people in the district in our daytime population come from? Maryland and Virginia. And so we want to make sure that all of our children here are protected, um, and that they have what they need to thrive. So our rates are below 95%. We know that it's more than likely that we can have an outbreak that spreads very quickly if our rates are below 95%. What we benefit from called herd immunity goes away when we're below 95%. So we all need to band together and have our children vaccinated so that we can get those rates back up above 95%. There are some special things that we can do for you at DC Health that if you don't know your child's immunization status, you can give us a call and we'll help you get your records. If your child's initial immunizations or vaccines weren't given in the District of Columbia, you can give us a call and we'll help connect you with another jurisdiction who may have those records. So we don't want you to think that not knowing your immunization status or your vaccine status is a, re is a reason to continue to hide from the healthcare provider's office. So your pediatrician, your family doc, your nurse practitioner, we're all waiting for you to come on in and get your annual wellness check so we can help you get vaccinated. Vaccines save lives. They are safe. They are effective. We're here to answer any questions you may have at DC Health. The healthcare providers at the 42 healthcare facilities that we're sharing information with you about are here waiting for you. Mary Center is one such facility that we have great partnerships with, but there are plenty others that we can share information with you as well. So please don't hesitate, don't wait, vaccinate. It's a critically important service. Since the 1960s, it's the single best thing that we know we can do for our children. And we know parents want to know what to do to get ready for school, to get ready for camp, and this is the best message we can all share together. So again, don't wait, vaccinate.
and I'm going to ask Deputy Mayor Kai to join us at the podium to talk public schools. Good morning, everyone. As we stand here today bringing awareness to the importance of immunization for district students, we cannot stress enough how diseases such as measles, mumps, hepatitis are very contagious and place our most vulnerable residents at risk. This is why we are taking precautions to ensure that all youth attending public, charter, or private schools in the district have up-to-date immunization records. To be clear, and I will repeat, all students in all D.C. schools are required to prove certification of immunization. That is why my office and the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services are working closely to coordinate efforts with D.C. public schools and the Chancellor, D.C. public charter schools and Scott Pearson and the Charter School Board, private schools and ASI, the state superintendent's office, and the Department of Health to ensure that every student in the district is up to date with their vaccinations. Now, how are we doing this? First, through ongoing communications. You can certainly expect to see broad advertising this summer as part of this campaign. Individual schools also have already begun outreach to families regarding the specific status of their child's immunization records. Secondly, we are providing many ways in partnership with the Department of Health for families to access immunizations, as you have heard. There are many options for obtaining vaccinations throughout the city, and this is also why we are incorporating vaccination and health screenings at public engagement events over this summer. And thirdly, and importantly for my office, we are working to ensure that schools and families comply with this requirement in order for students to be vaccinated. This is why we continue to include the universal health certificate and oral health assessment forms in the enrollment packages for district schools. These enrollment forms and these packages are required for all students. So you've got to have your immunizations. It has to be reflected in those universal health forms, and those must be turned into the schools. That's a requirement for attendance at D.C. schools. So in other words, we are providing every opportunity for families to not only be in compliance for this upcoming year, but to remain up to date each school year. We do not want any child excluded from school, especially if it is preventable. However, the district is committed to ensuring safe environments for all residents to learn and work. With that, I will turn it back over to the mayor. Thank you. Dr. Nesbitt, would you join me in the podium for questions? And I also want to acknowledge that we are joined by Deputy Mayor Wayne Turnage, who is uh, the district's Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services, as well as our Health Care Finance Director. So thank you, Wayne, uh, for being here. Questions? 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 Yes, Martin. Um, this could be for the mayor, for Dr. Nesbitt. Okay. So you mentioned that uh, vaccination rates are in the kind of low 90s, roughly, d depending on the school system you're looking at. But CDC data said that for kindergartners, it's that, is actually a bit lower than that, kind of in the 80s. Um, is there any reason that the rates are lower among kin kindergartners, kind of any concerns there, and what could the city do to, to beef it up on that end? Okay. And Martin's question is about how kindergarten data may differ from uh, other age groups? Yes, so we get this question often, so thank you, and it gives us the opportunity to clar uh, clarify for um, the broader public. So the CDC looks at age of entry at an earlier point. Um, for some, many of the vaccines you have between the age of four to six to administer the vaccine, and they look at the age of four. Uh, so we don't consider the student non-compliant until that age range is completed. Yes, thank you. So uh, all students, as I said, are required to turn in their enrollment packages, uh, which include the universal health screening. We work very closely with the Department of Health and a centralized data system. And so what happens if you don't have your immunization form completed or your, your immunizations done is there is direct outreach from the school to remind you that you need to get that completed within 20 days. 
and that's the process that we will continue to follow. Yes, um, for you, please introduce yourself. Lisa Fletcher, ABC 7 TV. Mm -hmm. This is for you as mayor and deputy mayor. Um, we FOIA the records on immunizations for D.C. and discovered more than 8,000 students that do not have valid waivers if they are attending school. So this process that you're talking about to give the 20-day grace period and deal with the problem, how are you dealing with it? There are 8,000 kids that should have exemptions but don't, but that are still in school. I don't know about that number. Are you, are you familiar with that? Okay. I'll, I have to follow up with you about that. I can't confirm a number like 8,000. I don't know that. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't know if this is possible, but I was just wondering if maybe we can send a quick message to the community in Spanish you know, about how important it is for them to, um, I don't know if uh, Mary Center would want to do that or the leap. A pediatrician as well. Sure. Um, don't know if that's possible. Thank that's you. Mayor. Um, acabamos de decir que es muy, muy importante, el gobierno acaba de decir que es muy, muy importante y como Mary Center también y como centros médicos que todos los niños sean vacunados, que no tiene nada que ver con la inmigración, nada que ver con dinero, nada que ver con qué escuela, si es privada o pública o lo que sea, los niños tienen que ser vacunados o si no, no van a ser aceptados en, la, en las escuelas. Tienen 20 días después de que la escuela principie para que los niños lleguen uh, con las vacunas ya. Muchas gracias. Uh, you heard the deputy mayor talk about the, the deputy mayor's office for education and for health and human services. So the deputy mayor's office would be handling that? Yes, both. So in terms of compliance, you would go to the deputy mayor's office as well? Questions about compliance, you can send to the, go to the deputy mayor's office. Yes. Yes. Mayor, can you take uh, two questions off topic? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, your letter to President Trump asked me to replenish the security fund. Mm -hmm. Uh, number one, have you received any response yet? I don't think so, I, I, but I will double check with my team today, but not as of Friday. Okay. Secondly, I did hear back when I did the story last week, I heard on background from a White House official saying that the money should have been covered in the fiscal year 18 overage, uh, that it should have been covered, the $7 million should have been covered from the fiscal year uh, 18 budget, and that you didn't ask the president in the 19 or 20 budgets for that $7 million? Uh, we asked for it, certainly. Um, the, the inauguration was in January of 2017, uh, and in the federal request that followed, uh, we followed with um, the White House. Uh, anything that now needs to happen that's not covered in the president's proposal, uh, we're going to seek from our congressional appropriators. So basically what this official is saying is tough luck. They won't have the last word. I think you know the president makes a proposal and the Congress um, has the power of the purse. And we, are, our congresswoman with uh, one of the senators from Maryland, uh, has produced a bill to make sure not only that that security fund uh, is where it should be, um, but that we are preparing for um, the next inauguration. All right. If I could follow up. Uh, if I can follow up on the uh, sports betting contract, uh, it's very controversial, but it's passed the city council now. Your reaction to it passing, and do you believe there's a cloud over it now with Jack Evans' ethics issues? Um, I believe that not only did the CFO's office, but the council went through an extensive review. Um, I haven't gotten it um, yet, but I expect to sign it into law comment about possibly being a cloud over the contract now with Jack Evans' ethics troubles? Well, the CFO, uh, as you know, is responsible for the implementation of the lottery, and um, the policy decision was to connect sports betting with the lottery, and uh, I have great confidence in the CFO's recommendation. Yes. Just real quick, back on vaccines, if you could talk about, the, I mean, the non-compliance rates are a little bit higher in private and parochial schools. 
what, I mean, does the district have any control over what students are getting vaccinated there? Kind of have, have there been cases in those schools where parents have said, listen, I have religious objections or I have kind of other objections to vaccines, so I don't want to get them. Can you just address that? Sure. I'm going to ask Paul if he can speak on behalf of how those reports are made. And when I introduced him, I neglected to say that our laws uh, apply to our independent schools as well. Yes, yeah, so it is our, our full expectation, obviously, that private school students comply with the immunization requirements as well. Uh, our Office of State Education, according to law, has primary responsibility for the public schools, both DCPS and charter schools. And in addition, we coordinate closely with independent private schools to ensure that they continue to meet the compliance rates as well. So we do similar things there as we do with the public schools, meaning we let them know what we understand their compliance rates to be, and we work with them individually to ensure compliance with this law. And we will continue and expand our outreach efforts to individual private schools this summer also. Okay, so I think um, we're gonna follow um, Maria and see how vaccinations are given. Okay, thank you everybody.